It is a great joy for me to be with you, particularly in this historic church. What is the greatest danger for Christian believers? I believe it is discouragement. And where does discouragement come from? It comes from fear. You'll fail, so don't try. The very etymology of the English word discourage. Fear deprives us of our courage. And so in the face of the enemy, we are tempted to give up, to say it won't work. We can't win, so why try? A modern illustration of this is found in the books of J.R.R. Tolkien, The Lord of the Rings. If you have seen the movie or read the book, you remember that at one point in the story, the fellowship of the ring has been broken, some going one way, some another, and one part of the fellowship come into the land of Rohan, horse riders, and they're looking for these valiant horse riders to be of assistance in the great war that is coming. But they discover that the king of Rohan, Theoden, is sitting in his great wooden palace, a wrinkled, wizened old man, listening to the whispering of his counselor, Wormtongue. And when Gandalf, the leader of this portion of the band, comes in, Theoden says, oh, is it you? come to trouble us again. And Gandalf says, rise, king of the mark. Mount your charger. Lead your soldiers into battle. The hour has come. Oh, never mind. I know all about that. Worm tongue has told me. It's useless. The warriors of the enemy are too much for us. There's nothing to be done. It's, it's over. And Gandalf says, maybe it is over. Maybe the war is lost. But I'll tell you this. I would rather meet the enemy face to face, astride my charger, than sit here in this dim and darkling place. And taking his staff, he strikes Wormtongue. And Wormtongue runs off squeaking. Slowly we see a transformation take place. The wizened, wrinkled old man begins to rise. And somehow the atmosphere begins to clear. And he says, yes, yes, perhaps it is useless. But we will fight them. Courage, courage. Oh, how easy it is for us in this day to succumb to the fears that are all around us. That's what was happening to the Israelites in exile. All of their hopes, all of their dreams had been destroyed. They thought they were the chosen people, but they discover themselves cast off, abandoned, it appears. They thought that the land was theirs forever, and now they've been thrown out of the land. Fearful, afraid, there's nothing left for us. And Isaiah, by inspiration, was able to look down across the centuries to that time and to say to his people, fear not. Fear not. In the passages of scripture that were read for us from Isaiah a few moments ago, fear not appears five times with five different additions. And I want us to consider those this afternoon. 
Because you and I, as Christians, need to have our courage restored. You and I, as Christians, need to remember that we need not fear. So what does Isaiah say to them and to us? He says, fear not, for I am with you. Simple words, four of them in English, I am with you. But they are four words that change everything. They are the four words that ring through the Bible from one end to another. They are the English translation of the Hebrew, Immanuel, God with us. Oh my, can that be true? Is the eternal God who is beyond the farthest galaxy, who is deeper than the tiniest neutron, is he with us? And the words of the scripture resound over and over, yes, yes, he is with us. That's what held Joseph in 13 years of disaster, one disaster after another, until he ends up in an Egyptian dungeon. But the word is, but the Lord was with him. What does it mean? If the Lord is with you, then you are not alone in the darkest night. If the Lord is with you, then nothing you do is in vain. If the Lord is with you, you need not fear the strongest enemy, for he is stronger than all. And oh, the good news of the scripture is, this is not just an idea, it's not just a concept, it's reality. He is with us in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is in this room right now as really as he ever was on the dusty roads of Galilee. He is with us. He's with us in our illness. He's with us in our frustration. He's with us in our loneliness. He's with us in our injustice. He is with us. He has taken our humanity upon himself and become one with us. Fear not, I am with you. Fear not, I will help you. Hmm, how interesting. Not, sit down and watch while I do it. Not, I'll sit and watch while you do it. But you begin, you begin, and I will come alongside you to provide the energy and the power to do what you cannot do. What a thought, what a thought. I walk into my house, it's dark. I reach and I find the light switch. I turn the light switch on, ha <laughs> ha. I have lighted the house. Fool. <laughs> you didn't light the house. All you did was throw the switch. Yes, but I did throw the switch. There would be no light. No power coming from the power station would come into those bulbs until I threw the switch. <laughs> But if there was no connection with the power station, I could throw the switch all I wanted, <laughs> and there would be no light. Do you see it? I will help you. No, I will not do it for you, but I'll do it through you. Ha, huh. what good news. Why does he do that? He doesn't need us. 
He doesn't need me. He doesn't need you. He has all the power of the universe at the tips of his fingers. Why would he say, I want to work together with you? Why would he say that? Those of us who have children understand. I'm building a birdhouse. And Andrew comes and says, Daddy, could I help? Oh, yes, son. I need some help here. Now, after he goes to bed, I'm probably going to have to pull out a lot of bent nails. But it's more important to build a boy than to build a birdhouse. And so it is with God. God asks us to come alongside and he will help us. You say my power is so small. My abilities are so few. Ah, yes. But his power is endless. His abilities are forever. Fear not. What is it that God is asking you to do? And you say, it's too much. I can't do that. And he says, no, you can't. But I will help you. Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I will help you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. Some of us here perhaps are saying, oh, I did try. I did take courage. And it failed. Ah, the books have not yet been closed. God is able to take those broken pieces, those failed attempts, and to redeem them. He is able to take the broken pieces of our lives and restore them and renew them and to make even something better out of the disaster than we could have imagined beforehand. That's what redemption means. Redemption, because he is the creator, he can do something new out of the disaster. Redemption, because he is love, he will redeem. Redemption. He can take even our worst sins and suck the poison out of them and give us new life. Fear not. Oh, the enemy loves to list all of the failures of our past all the sins that we have committed, all the foolish, stupid things we've done, there they are. And we lay them before our Father, weeping and say, oh, look at this, Father. Look at this. And he says, look at what? And the paper is blank. His blood has cleansed it. Fear not, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I will help you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. Fear not, for I will pour water upon the dry ground. Oh, here is the good news of the New Testament. Why did Jesus Christ come? 
I ask this question of believers around the world. And again and again, they give the wrong answer. Oh, Jesus Christ came so that my sins could be forgiven and I could go to heaven. No. Why did Jesus Christ come? He came so that you and I could share the holy character of God and spend eternity with him in that character. Too often for us Christians, the high moment of the year is Easter. It ought to be Pentecost. Jesus Christ rose from the dead, having cleansed the temple of our soul in order that the Father might send the Holy Spirit into this cleansed temple and we could live the life of God. Fear not, for I will pour water upon the dry ground of your lives. I meet so many Christians who are struggling, struggling to be Christian. It's like an apple tree saying, I've got to bear apples. Ugh. I've got to bear apples. Ugh. No apples yet. I'll have to try harder. That's not good news. That's bad news. The good news is the Holy Spirit is ours to live his life through us. To love the unlovable. To be honest when we're in the middle of an office filled with lies. To be faithful when everything around you says no, no. Break your promises. You're getting ripped off. You're getting taken advantage of. And the Holy Spirit has come to flow through us, to remove the strain of living and give us the freedom to be Christ in our homes in our offices, wherever we are. Fear not, fear not. Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I will help you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. Fear not, for I will pour water upon the dry ground. Fear not, for you are my witnesses. Oh my, now I'm really afraid. Witnesses, oh, I, I've got to go up to people on the street and say, uh, do you know Jesus? That's terrifying. That's not what the concept means. Jesus was quoting Isaiah on his ascension day when he said to the disciples, you are my witnesses. That's what God says to those people in exile. Those people whose sins have driven them out of the promised land those people and God says you're my witnesses where ah in the court case that I'm about to set up Isaiah pictures a court case in which God calls the Babylonian idols into court and he says we are now going to find out who is God here you idols call your witnesses. 
who can give evidence proving that you are God. And when they have failed, I will call my witnesses. The Hebrew people were going to be the evidence to the Babylonians that Yahweh is God and there is no other. <laughs> you are God's living evidence in Seoul, Korea that he is God and there is no other. Your lives redeemed, renewed, empowered are to be the living evidence and that's good news. Oh, wow. I have a calling. You have a calling. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the presence of God in our lives, our lives, not through our effort, not through our struggle, but through our living in the center of His blessed will, our lives can be evidence that he is God, able to take a broken, fallible, worthless human life and make it a blessing, make it a source of hope, make it a source of integrity. Ha <laughs> ha! Fear not, fear not. Oh, my friends, I don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't either. But this I know, that whatever comes, we can face it with courage. Theoden led his horse riders out to battle. And it seemed indeed that the battle was going to be a disaster. That the forces of the enemy, overwhelming in their power, were going to succeed. But in the last hour, a miracle occurred, which would not have occurred if Theoden had remained on his throne in that dark, smoky palace. Fear not, I am with you. Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, I have redeemed you. Fear not, I will pour water upon the dry ground. Fear not, you are my living evidence. Amen.